Good morning. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So thankful for your presence here. I want to welcome you to our worship this morning. Uh, I am uh, Pastor Mark Stillman. Last I checked, I was pastor here. Um, but I haven't been around for a while. I've been sick. I'm recovering from pneumonia and bronchitis. And so I was out last week and Pastor Ken was, uh, Pastor Ken Susskraut was, uh, was uh, kind enough to come and lead the worship. And he's going to help us out today because I am on my way to recovery, but I don't know if I have it in me to do two full services. So he was here this morning to lead the liturgy parts of the service and he's here to help out uh, during this service as well. Uh, we welcome you. We ask that you record your attendance with us. In the few slots in front of you, there should be a card. The blue side is for uh, visitors, the gold side is for members. And if you could fill that out at some point during the service and place that in the offering plate on the way out, we greatly, greatly appreciate that. And we want to welcome all of our guests and members who are worshiping with us online this morning and pray, uh, pray blessed Easter to you as well. And you can record your attendance with us by simply going to the YouTube chat bar and typing your name in. And that's how, that's how we have uh, a record of your attendance this morning. 
We do have our faith news and notes. Uh, this uh, has the lessons for today as well as all the announcements. So if you need that, just raise your hand. One of our ushers will make sure that you get that. And if you're with us online, you can always get to this by going to our webpage, clicking on the resource tab, and that will take you to a page where you can download and print those out as well. <coughs> Add just a couple announcements we'll be going over at the end of our service this morning. Uh, but in the meantime, are we ready to worship today? Yes. All right. <coughs> in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, I ask you to confess your sins. Do you humbly acknowledge and sincerely repent of your sins, if so, declare so by saying, I do. Do you believe that God in Jesus Christ forgives you all your sins? If so, declare so by saying, I do. Upon this your confession, I by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who on this glorious day raised your Son, Jesus Christ, from the dead, Bless us now as we gather in his name, that his risen presence might bring us comfort, reconciliation, peace, and direction for our lives. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Father, we're so thankful for your presence among us this morning. God, we thank you that you have died on the cross. You've risen from the grave. You're not a dead Savior. You're a living Savior. And you walk with us every day. We know and sense your presence and your peace in the midst of our trials and turmoils. We thank you and we praise you that you are always with us and always ready to forgive us for all the sins that we commit. We thank you, Lord, for the cross. We thank you, Lord, for the empty tomb. In Jesus' name.
may be seated for the readings. The Old Testament reading from the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of aged wine, of rich food, full of marrow, of aged wine, well refined. And he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all people, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever, and the Lord will wipe away tears from all faces, and the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Behold, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. <clears throat> Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. A reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. <clears throat> Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved. If you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins, in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than five hundred brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we preach, and so you believe. We rise from the gospel. <coughs> The Gospel according to St. Mark, the 16th chapter. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Siloam, brought, bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. And they were saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? And looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe, and they were alarmed. And he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. And they went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. That is the gospel. You may be seated. <laughs> Thank you. 
And grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The text for this morning is that gospel that was just read, Mark chapter 16, 1 through 8. And it's printed for you in your worship, in your news and notes, if you care uh, to follow along. We live in a crazy world, um, but we all know that. And it's been crazy for a long time, and it just seems to be getting crazier all the time. But there's some really crazy traditions that are associated with Easter ar around the world. And sometimes I like to go on the, the net and just try to find what they are. For example, in uh, Germany, uh, you can make uh, what is known as an Easter tree, where you, you tape Easter eggs to the trees in, in the yards. It, it can look like this, kind of dismal. Uh, or it could look like that. Uh, in, in Hungary, the women dress up in traditional clothing, the men dress up in traditional clothing, and then the men throw water on the women. <laughs> I don't know why. And of course, in Poland, uh, you have the tradition of the sculptured buttered lambs. Uh, you know it's an authentic sculptured buttered lamb when the cloves are there for the eyes. But perhaps the strangest one is uh, Papua New Guinea. In, in Papua New Guinea, obviously, it's very, very hot, and so there's not a lot of candy around that's going to last for, for So for some strange reason, they use cigarettes instead. They, they decorate trees with cigarettes. They hide cigarettes like Easter eggs, and they hunt for the cigarettes. I don't know why. It's weird. It's crazy. But there seems to be a, a, a world getting crazier and crazier in, in more serious ways as well. Uh, persecution of Chris, Christians is on the rise around the world and in this country as well. And it seems as if there's a world of uncertainty on virtually every front, whether it's economics, uh, whether it's politics, and who even wants to go there, uh, or society, and the trends are not favorable at all. And, and so it's, it's Easter, and you're sitting there probably thinking, what happened to he is risen, he is risen indeed. But you see, that's the point. See, I, I think the point is that, that Easter is more than just the, the one day a year, let's go to church, sing our songs, and celebrate, maybe even have a breakfast. And all that's wonderful, all that is good. But Easter has to be something more. If we're going to be resurrection people, we need to be resurrection people more than just one day out of the year, more than just on a Sunday. We need to be resurrection people during those difficult times, during the, the tough times as well as, as during the good times. And so what, is it, what does it mean to be a resurrection person? What does it mean to be Easter people? I think our text gives us the answer. So let's pray and ask God's Spirit to guide us as we consider the dilemma and the solution. Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for this morning. We thank you, Lord, for this Easter morning, the celebration of the resurrection of our Lord and Savior from the dead. And Lord, we pray that you would be with us and bless us as we sit at your feet and have you teach us from your holy word. We pray, Lord, that uh, every word spoken would be from you and you alone, that I would just be the vessel and the mouthpiece, and that our hearts would be open to hear and to learn and to receive all that you have for us this morning. We pray that in the name of Jesus and to his glory. Amen. The women come to the tomb early on Easter Sunday. It's the day after the Sabbath. They come so they can finish anointing the body of Jesus properly, building on the quickie job that Nicodemus and Joseph had done on Good Friday evening. And you can tell that they're still in shock. They're, they're still they're in numbness, they're still in denial because none of them thinks about the stone. This is not until they're on their way to the tomb, to the tomb that someone, one of them finally says, oh man, the stone. What are we going to do? Who's going to roll away the stone? 
they're, they're still in this shock and this numbness and this denial. And, and I love Mark's gospel. It's short. It's sweet. It's to the point. I love all the gospels, of course. But uh, So they come to the tomb, and, and the stone is rolled away. They see the angel. He gives them that wonderful message. Jesus is alive. He is risen. And the text ends with these wonderful words. Uh, and they said nothing to anyone for they were afraid. They said nothing to anyone. It seems as if uh, unbelief is as much a part of the story as, as belief. If you were to summarize the activity here in the Gospel of Mark, this is kind of the way it went. They went out quickly. They fled from the tomb. They trembled and were amazed. They said nothing to no one, and they were afraid. Luke tells us in his Gospels that when the ladies that did go and tell the disciples, their words seemed to the disciples to be like idle tales, and, and they did not believe them. Here in the Gospel of Mark, the rest of chapter 16, which a lot of scholars agree was added later, Mary Magdalene finally does go and tell the disciples, and, and they don't believe her. They don't believe her. We, we all know about Thomas and his faith issues that he had on, on Easter. These women were weighed down, if the truth be told. The, the world was bearing down hard on them. And sometimes, sometimes you just feel so tired. Sometimes you don't know what to do. You don't know what to say. They knew their Lord was dead. They knew the Sanhedrin was out to get all of Jesus' followers and it seemed as if the world was winning. I don't know if that ever seems that way for you in your life. And I don't think I'm just looking at it through the eyes of a guy who's recovering from pneumonia and has been sick for the last 10 days. But I think that's life. Life gets us down sometimes. Life wears us down. And, and so the solution, it would seem to me, uh, is the missing ingredient uh, of this passage. That there's, there's one thing that's missing from this gospel of Mark. And that's an encounter with the living Jesus. See, when you take into that uh, consideration, every one of those incidences of unbelief that I just mentioned, all took place without an encounter with the living Jesus. And then as soon as that encounter with the living Jesus takes place, the unbelief is replaced with belief. Uh, the, the, the fear is replaced with awe and, and joy. Let's have the greatest preacher of the 20th century explain it to us. Yes, Jesus Christ is alive. He rose from the dead, and that day, that Easter Sunday morning, that first Easter, when Mary and Mary Magdalene <laughs> and Salome went to the grave expecting to anoint a dead body, they saw the angel sitting there. And they said, where is Jesus? The angel said, he is not here, he is risen. I submit to you tonight that that's the greatest news the world has ever heard. He is not here. He has conquered the grave. He's alive. And ladies and gentlemen, I believe that there's more proof that Jesus Christ rose from the dead than almost any other fact in Roman history. I don't believe there's a fact in ancient history today so well proven as the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But even if there was no proof, no historical proof, no scientific proof, and there is, I would still believe it because I believe this book is God's inspired word and the whole early church went up and down the country preaching the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That was the thing that shook the Roman Empire, that a man had risen from the dead, that he was alive, that death could not hold him. Christ is alive. He's a living Savior. And once you're convinced of that, then he is living for you as well. Now, every Easter, we go through the litany of proving the historicity of the resurrection, the things that Dr. Graham mentioned. And I put that as a part of the solution because it's good. It's good that we have uh, those things. Uh, for example, we have 
four separate documents. We have them all together in one thing called the Bible. But they're four separate documents, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They're written by four different authors, four different times, four different places. They did not have a gospel writing weekend. They did not text one another. They did not have the webinar to go and search. Four different documents, four different authors, four different times, four different places, and yet they all agree on this one fact of the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. You know there are just, there's just, there are uh, elements and, and events in the reign of Alexander that have just one document, one flimsy document at best. And historians will look at that as an attested fact of history. And yet they have four separate documents attesting to this fact and they deny the historicity of, of the resurrection. Then we have the, the 500 witnesses. In Roman law, if 500 witnesses witness an event, as far as Rome is concerned, that, that event is history. That event is fact. And then, of course, you have the variations. That's what everybody always talks to, right? Well, they're all so different from one another. You know, the one's got one angel, one's got two angels. One's got a group of women, one's got one woman. Well, if you were to witness an accident out here at the corner of US-1 in Ebb Tide, and you had 25 people witness that accident, I guarantee you, you're going to have 25 different eyewitness reports of that accident. Somebody's going to say the driver had a red jacket on. Someone else is going to say, no, it was a blue jacket. Someone else is going to say, no, he didn't have a jacket on at all. But the one thing they all know is that there was an accident out there on the corner. So you have all these things, all these variations are simply extra verification of the historical accuracy and the fact of the resurrection. Now all of these things are, are, are good. They're, they're good and, and they're solid points. And they're things that we should know. But they're up here. They're in our brain. See, resurrection ultimately has to do with our heart, like Dr. Graham said. He said, if none of that existed, if none of that existed, I'd still believe. That's what my dad used to say all the time. I was a college kid. I was majoring in science. I didn't even know the Lord for the first part of my college experience. And I just thought I knew everything. And I was arguing with him, all this scientific stuff and everything. And every time, and my dad was, was a smart guy. But every single time he'd say, well, you know what? I just come down on the side of the Bible. I believe the Bible is the word of God. And I believe the Bible will be proven in the end to be true and to be accurate. This encounter with the living Jesus takes place in, in the heart. Right? Remember what, what Jesus said to Thomas, the, the doubting guy, when he finally showed himself and he showed his nails and, his, and, and Thomas believes, right, because he, he has the proof standing before him. But this is what Jesus says to Thomas. Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. That's you. That's me. We believe and we trust because we have that same encounter with the living Jesus, only now it takes place spiritually, it takes place in, in our hearts. We often sing that, that song, that wonderful contemporary song that we love to sing, Open the eyes of my heart. You know, I want to see you, Lord. Well, Romans tells us that takes place in the heart. Romans chapter 10, verse 9, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It's another song we love to sing this time of year. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. See, each and every one of us who have had that living encounter with Jesus spiritually in our hearts, we know it because he's changed us. We have a peace. We have a victory. We have a, we have a calmness. He's with us throughout the day. He walks with us. He talks with us. He leads us along life's way. That encounter in the heart takes place through the Word of God. It takes place through the sacraments, the power and the presence of God's Holy Spirit in your life and in my life. And we need those encounters. We need to know Jesus as living again because life is hard and life bears us down and life beats us down and it'll keep us down if we let it. But there's a great little song that's out. It's been out for a number of years. It's called 
tell your heart to beat again. And it, the backstory of this song is almost more fascinating than the song itself. There's a pastor in Ohio, and uh, he, has a, he had an a, a open-heart surgeon as a member of his church. This, this pastor, for whatever reason, had always wanted to see open-heart surgery. Never really wanted to be a doctor, but just wanted to see it. And then finally it worked out with his schedule and the surgeon's schedule that he was able to come in and, and watch an open-heart surgery from the observation room, obviously. But what happened was amazing. They, they opened the chest up. It was a woman patient who had been brought in. And they, they opened up the chest like they usually do. And they actually take the heart out of the cavity. And they work on the heart and they repair it. And then they put it back in and they get it all going again. And then the very last thing that the open heart surgeon does is he massages the heart to get it to beat again. And, and he was massaging the heart, but it, it wasn't starting again. It, it wasn't beating. And he kept massaging, and, and it still wasn't beating. And so then finally, he did something that, that he probably never learned in medical school. He literally took his mask off, and he got down on one knee, and he began to speak to the woman in her ear. And he said, Mrs. Johnson, this is your surgeon. He said, I just want to let you know I fixed your heart. Your heart is perfect. It's working normally. Everything is okay. What I need you to do now, Mrs. Johnson, is I need you to tell your heart to beat again. And there was about five seconds, and then beep, beep, beep. And the heart began to beat again. Listen to the song.
people our hearts have been fixed he's done the work he's done everything that needs to be done when he died on the cross and when he rose again from the dead we just receive the gift of eternal life that he's given to us and in that way we tell our heart to beat again and in the midst of the difficulties of your life it doesn't matter whether that's just a bad morning whether that's something that you've been dealing with your whole life, or maybe that's something that you've been going through for months, maybe it's a problem with a, a child that you have, or a family member, or whatever it might be. He is there. He is with us. He is alive. Tell your heart to beat again. Amen. Now may the peace of God that passes all human understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In our prayers this day, we rejoice in God's goodness centered in the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we, like those women, have come here this day on the first day of the week. Your word tells us that as they came, the sun had risen. Yes, it was the beginning of a new week, but more importantly, the sun had risen. Your son, Jesus Christ, the one who was conceived in Bethlehem, born to save us from our sins, the one who 30 years later would be rejected, crucified, he would die and be buried, but on the third day he rose again. That is Easter fact. The resurrection is not an invention of humankind. It is not the creation of our hands. But the resurrection that we celebrate this day was conceived in your great love. It was born in your faithfulness, in your covenant promises, now completed and fulfilled in the one who is raised from the dead. And so on this day of resurrection, we praise you, we bless you, we glorify you for Easter fact. We also come as those women with our problems, they had a problem. They thought the tomb was yet sealed. They thought they were coming to complete the burial of a dead Jesus. 
They came with tears and with doubts and with despair. They came with their problem. But it was a problem for which you already had a solution. Their problem was already solved, even without their awareness. The, the stone had been rolled from the grave. We ask you, O oh Lord, this day to make us aware that you already have a solution for our challenges. You have an answer to our prayers. You have your solution. The solution we long for and need that is already about to be made known. We thank you, O oh Lord, for our problems, for our challenges, for all our burdens, because in those weaknesses your strength is made manifest. And so we praise you this day that indeed the stone has been rolled away and you know already what we need even before we pray. And you already have that solution beyond our deserving, beyond our need, and beyond our imagination. And so we praise you this day for our problems because they bring us to our knees trusting in you. And like those women, we celebrate the promise proclaimed from a conquered tomb that Jesus has risen and he is not captive in some distant future, but ra rather he is going before us. How wonderful it is, O oh God, that no matter what tomorrow holds, Jesus will be there. As soon as we arrive, we will become aware that he has been there waiting, waiting to give us strength, waiting to give us direction, waiting to receive us and lead us. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that Jesus is not back there somewhere, but rather he is in our tomorrow, even as he will be there in the moment of our death. He will be there. He will be there waiting. He will be there as he always has been calling us to faith, calling us to trust, calling us to not give up hope, because there are blessings already prepared for us beyond the grave that we call our own, in that a kingdom already prepared for us in your Son. And so in our prayers this day, we offer you praise. We praise you for Easter fact. We praise you for our problems for which you have your solutions. And we praise you for that hope which is ours, conceived in your love and made evident in the resurrection of Christ from the dead, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, today, always, now, and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Last week I spoke to you about the sharing of peace. And last week I spoke about how in the sharing of peace we share forgiveness. So the sharing of peace is not simply, hello, how are you? but rather it is an act of reconciliation. It's an act of making peace, sharing that peace which we have with God, somehow now giving it away in our relationships, especially in those relationships that perhaps have been broken. 
this today or this past week or at any time. And so the sharing of peace indeed is the sharing of shalom, the sharing of reconciliation, but it is much more. The sharing of peace, the sharing of the hope that peace gives. Pastor said this morning, we are a resurrection people. And what does that mean? As a resurrection people, we live confidently. We do not cringe. We do not fear. We do not somehow wait for another shoe to drop. But rather, we live confidently because the Lord has risen. We are a people of faith who walk not by sight, but rather trusting in the hope that is ours through the resurrection. I remember long ago I taught in my classes something important about the resurrection. I told my classes, in the beginning of creation, God said, let there be light. That is what scripture tells us. In the beginning of creation, God said, let there be light. But in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, God said, let there be hope. Today we celebrate that hope that is ours. That hope that fills us, that hope that moves us, the hope that motivates us, and the hope that we have the opportunity in the sharing of peace to share one to another. And so as you greet each other this morning, just don't say, hello, how are you? But rather encourage each other. Speak kindly and acceptingly and lovingly to each other. Sharing the hope that you have in Jesus. Lifting someone perhaps up on this Easter day. And so I thank Pastor for allowing me to join with him in worship this morning. You have a man of God. You have a man of God who is a man of hope. And we are a people of hope. And so now rise. Get up! And share the peace and hope of the Lord.
love it. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Please be seated with the offering. Today we celebrate the Lord's presence among us through bread and wine. We rejoice in his crucified, risen presence in the Holy Eucharist. The Holy Eucharist is more than just a ritual. The Holy Eucharist is the celebration of Christ among us. Please rise. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of creation. For you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For Christ, our Passover Lamb, has been sacrificed for us. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising again, he has restored to us everlasting life. He has redeemed us from bondage to sin and death. And by his resurrection, he has delivered to us new life in him. Grant that we this day will keep this feast of joy and sincerity and truth, faithfully receiving our Lord's body and blood, so that he might be in us and we in him, now and this day until eternity, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, in whose name we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup, is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. You may be seated. We will commune our praise band and our altar workers, and then we'll have general distribution after that. We do have gluten-free wafers available for this service. Um, if you come forward and you desire that, just let me know when you come forward. Uh, we have baskets on either side for the uh, empty individual cups, and there are grape juice at the center of those, uh, that tray of individual cups for any that might need that as well.
Well, I haven't been here in a week. I haven't read that. I don't know what's going on. This stuff, stuff's happening. So make sure you. We have a movie night coming up. What date is that? You say with a question mark. Uh, yes, May 3rd, I believe. It's a Friday night. Uh, we do have a movie night coming up. It's a fantastic movie. It's out now. Um, I think it's called Ordinary Angels. Uh, we'll begin with a meal, and you'll get a lot more information about that, but just get that in your, in your mind and on your calendar now. That that's, that'll be a great night of fellowship, and hopefully it gets uh, some uh, school families out as well uh, to watch that. Uh, anything else, you'll have to look here. Uh, or call the church office, but don't ask me, because I don't know what's going on. So thankful for your presence here this morning. Thankful for all of our guests and members who have been worshiping with us online as well. Uh, pray God's richest blessings on the rest of your Easter. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Let's rise for the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen.
Lord, peace serve the risen Lord. <laughs>